The transfer portal is officially open, which means the chaos has begun. In today's video, we'll discuss some very early portal targets for your Red Raiders, as well as discuss five-star wide receiver Micah Hudson officially entering the portal. Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's RC Maxfield here for the Back to 12 podcast. And listen, if you want more of these portal target videos, all I'm going to ask you to do is two things for me. Like the video and hit that subscribe button. Clear indicator that, hey, RC, we want to see more content like this. And if we get some good numbers, obviously, I'm going to put it out there to you guys. So, again, if you want more recruiting videos for Texas Tech football in the portal specifically right now, all I ask you to do is like the video and hit that subscribe button. All right, let's go ahead and start with uh, Micah Hudson. Um, Chris Hummer of 247 Sports was the first to break the news in its certainty. Um, on this one. It's not entirely shocking that Micah Hudson has now officially entered the transfer portal. Remember, we heard about this about what, Monday, Tuesday, early last week, and we went live here on the channel and we said if Texas Tech lost Micah Hudson, it would be a malpractice by the coaching staff. Now, again, are we ever going to learn all of the details of what went wrong with Micah Hudson in Texas Tech, at least from his perspective? Absolutely not. Are we ever going to learn exactly what Micah Hudson wants in terms of his role? Probably not, right? Now, I will say this. Is Texas Tech entirely out of the woods? I, I don't know, right? It's the portal era. Just because you enter the portal does not mean you're 100% gone. Do I think Texas Tech is still going to contact Micah, even though he's still in the portal? Yes, I do. I don't think they're totally out of it, but there is a Texas A&M beat writer reporting that Micah Hudson is trying to schedule a visit down to College Station later this week. So, I mean, listen, he's going to do his due diligence, it sounds like. It, it just it kind of sucks that we got to this point, and there's a lot of nuance to it, and we can get into that another time. Um, but I will say this. If someone tells you exactly – why Micah Hudson is leaving Texas Tech, I think they're lying to you, okay? I think that there are a multitude of reasons, not just one, not just two, a multitude of reasons. And truthfully, the only person that knows why Micah Hudson is leaving Texas Tech or could potentially leave Texas Tech and, well, has entered his name into the portal to survey his options is Micah Hudson, okay? So, I know there's a lot of rumors going around and everything like that, but I think that that's probably the most logical way to think is that there's not just one reason. There's not just two reasons. There's a multitude of reasons. And the only person that knows those reasons is Micah Hudson. Okay. So let's stop it there. All right. Let's move on into some early Texas tech portal targets. Okay. And for those that don't know, you're seeing this video on Monday, December 9th. That is when the portal officially opened. I saw a stat earlier this morning where on the first day of the portal being open in 2023, there was a little over 500 players that entered, entered in its totality of the day. Okay. By about noon Eastern time, there was already 500 that had put their name in. It's nuts. This is going to be the biggest portal cycle we've ever seen. And then likely next year, if the rules don't change that much, it's going to be just as big. Okay. Okay. But let's start off with some of the names, and I'm going to preface some of these names real quick, okay? Some of y'all are not going to like that they are targeting smaller school guys early on here. They're still going to go after big school guys here, but early on, they're trying to find those diamonds in the rough, really pinpoint some traits that they like, and some size, okay? So let's start right there. You got Ian Thomas, Ian spelled Ian for those that don't know, from St. Francis, a defensive tackle. He's 6'4", 335. He is a redshirt freshman this past season at uh, St. Francis, so that means he will be a redshirt sophomore and have three years of eligibility remaining. Last year, he was an all-second-team conference member for the conference that St. Francis is in after he recorded 37 total tackles, seven tackles for loss, three and a half sacks in 2024, as well as three quarterback hurries. As I mentioned, three years of eligibility remaining. We all know if you watch Texas Tech even play really one snap of football this year that the interior and really just the defensive line as a whole was an issue. That's a big dude right there, 6'4", 335. You can't teach that, okay? Next on the list, that 
Texas Tech has offered today. Caleb Goody, Colorado State wide receiver, and the word that comes to mind when watching him play is speed. The stats are not going to wow you, but go watch the film, and he is a home run hitting type player, okay? Big play wide receiver, averaged 20.8 yards per catch last year and uh, had 21 catches just under 440 yards and four TDs. He's originally from Louisiana and will have two years of eligibility left. He's a speedster. And when he gets out in the open field and makes a guy miss, there's not very many players in all of college football that can catch up to him. You've got Reginald Virgil. Who doesn't love a good Reginald, right? I mean, they've worked out pretty well at Texas Tech. I think Reginald Davis worked out pretty well for the Red Raiders. This guy is from Miami of Ohio. He's a wide receiver, 6'4", 190, had 41 catches in 2024 to go along with 816 yards and nine TDs. He will have one year of eligibility remaining. Now, there is an NC State offensive lineman that Texas Tech has reached out to and offered a scholarship, and his name is Obi Asuye. Um, Hasn't really played much. Redshirt freshman, big, big guy, 6'5", Around 300 pounds, no stats. I mean, he really hasn't really played too much. He will have four years of eligibility left, but you can tell that they're going after specific traits, whether that's on the D-line, offensive line, wide receivers, whatever position it is, Texas Tech is targeting certain traits. Now, you may remember this school, Elon, an edge rusher, um, Kasim Moore, also baller name, Kasim Baller. 26 tackles, six sacks in 2024, played with Texas Tech, Tied in John Carlos Miller, the third at Elon. He will have one year of eligibility remaining. And on the limited tape that I saw of him, good bend, a little bit of power, but mostly he's using that speed rush technique off the edge. And he's not afraid to drop back just a little bit in the coverage as well, as long as he kind of plays in the zone variety and not man. Okay. You've got Ashton Winter. Um, he's an old Dominion safety, 26 tackles in 2024, two years of eligibility. More of that center fielder type guy. A lot of his snaps came on special teams. A little bit bigger of a safety, but you can tell he's not afraid to go downhill and make an impact in the run game. Now, James Thompson is a guy that maybe interests me more than any player on this list. And the reason being is this. If he wouldn't have gotten hurt with an upper body injury at Wisconsin, he's probably the Badgers' best defensive lineman in 2024. Instead, he missed the majority of the season. He is one of the better defensive linemen in the portal early on, at least. We'll see some bigger names there later on. I'm sure of it, but he is a guy that I am watching. Again, no stats really in 2024, but a guy that has piqued my interest a little bit as he stands 6'5", 295 pounds. Again, they're going after height and big dudes there in the middle of the tech defensive line, and I can't say that I blame him. Um, Giovanni Gibson, a Texas... Um, native, but, well, went to University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. 6'3", 205, 70 catches, 1,215 yards, and nine TDs, two years of eligibility remaining. Again, going after bigger wide receivers or wide receivers that have a certain trait that you can't teach, i.e. speed, height. Those are what they're going after. Right. So he's a guy that kind of interests me in the limited tape that I've been able to see. It looks like he was just dominant at that level of football there in Pine Bluff. But the next three guys that I want to discuss, Texas Tech hasn't offered yet, but I think they should and do their homework on them because I think that these guys could be really true impact players for the Red Raiders, and there are some ties to the Red Raiders in terms of potentially making them come out to the 806. Again, these are guys that I think that just entered the portal that Texas Tech should go after, so bear with me. Quinton Joyner. Southern Cal running back, 5'11", 216, totaled 63 carries for 478 yards and three TDs. He led the Big Ten last year in yards per carry with 7.6, three years of eligibility remaining. And you may be wondering to yourself, RC, what is the tie here to the Red Raiders? Well, he went to the same high school as the all-time leading rusher in Texas Tech program history. You may know him as it's Taj time out in the 806, Taj Brooks. Taj Brooks has already put out a couple of eye emojis after seeing him into the portal. There's a lot of fans excited about that. I think he would fit really, really well in a left which scheme at the running back spot. Now, there is a running back in the portal that we know for a fact would fit the left which scheme, and that is Ismail Mahdi, the Texas State running back. 
He rushed for 991 yards last year after rushing for 1331 in the first year of Leftwich calling plays down in San Marcos. He dealt with an injury early on in 2024, or else he probably would have been close to at least 11,000 yards this season as well. He looked great, and again, the obvious connection is the fact that Mac Leftwich is now the offensive coordinator at Texas Tech, okay? There's also a lineman that I think Texas Tech could show some interest in from Texas State. Again, nothing yet in terms of an official offer or anything, but I'm looking at Madi and then really looking at Alex Harkey as well. That is a lineman there at Texas State. It would not surprise me if Texas Tech shows some interest right there due to the connection with the new offensive coordinator, Mac Leftwich. Now, the other guy that has a connection to Texas Tech that entered the portal today, it's Tyler Mercer, the UNT offensive lineman. The 6'4", 295-pound offensive lineman was named a first-team true freshman All-American per on three. He has three years of eligibility remaining, and his tie to the 806 is that of two players on the football team. Ellis Davis and Connor Cardi. You may remember Connor Cardi, the four-star offensive lineman that flipped from Texas A&M to Texas Tech last, well, Wednesday on signing day, right? Both of them played at Prosper. Guess who else was on that offensive line with them for at least one season? Tyler Mercer. So again, a freshman All-American, first team freshman All-American, according to On3. That is a guy that I think Texas Tech could reach out to. We know the Red Raiders desperately need offensive linemen. But again, those are some early guys that Texas Tech has offered. And then those last three names, Joyner, Madi, and Mercer, are three guys I think Texas Tech should reach out to and really show some interest because I think you're going to need to add a veteran running back and you're obviously going to need to address the offensive line. And Mercer, three years of eligibility, and he's proven that he can play at a high level, albeit in Conference USA, that would be a guy that interests me from a Texas Tech standpoint. All right, that's going to do it. Again, these are early portal targets. There's going to be a lot of them. It's going to come quickly in terms of all over the board in the sense of who is Texas Tech going to be interested in, who's leaving Texas Tech, the big name that is leaving Texas Tech, at least right now in terms of putting his name officially in the portal, is five-star wide receiver Micah Hudson. But James Blanchard, Brian Nance, those guys are hard at work right now, evaluating tape and reaching out to really, it feels like a player every minute that enters the portal. So if you want to stay in the know on all things Texas Tech football, whether it's on the gridiron or the hardwood, but specifically the gridiron right now, because we're going to keep you up to date with everything bowl for Texas Tech. They're going to the Liberty Bowl. Be sure to check out the preview here on the channel or everything portal related. All you have to do to stay in the know is join a 100% free Texas Tech community that is also the largest Texas Tech community in the Back to 12 podcast channel. And the easiest way to do that is these three simple steps. All you got to do is simply like the video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that notification bell.